Is it a useful term, fake news, catch-all phrase? Uh, you know, I'm not so sure, Zainab, because I feel that obviously misinformation, propaganda, disinformation um, have been long-standing components of information mm. warfare. Uh, fake news has recently gained prominence vis-a-vis uh, -vis the American election, mm -hmm. uh, but as uh, we saw in that clip, when politicians use it as a catch-all phrase to cover uh, political spin, stuff they don't like, then it, then it gets murky. Um, so I think there is a debate to be had about how useful the term fake news is. Politicians, media outlets, partisan media outlets push out agendas, etc. But let's not forget that WMDs in Iraq was also fake news. Theresa May says in that clip, that Russian today is uh, a state... Weaponizing information. Uh, yeah. Weaponizing information, yeah. fair enough. But they're also saying, she's saying that, it, you know, through state-sponsored media. We're sitting on a BBC platform that's state-sponsored in the UK. We have to be able uh, to yeah. sort of uh, see that when we're looking at it from their point of view, we don't seem to notice our own flaws and weaknesses uh, in the Western mm -hmm. setup. Need to rework the business model Absolutely. below? Absolutely. I would agree. Say? I think that not only fake news for many reasons, but the business model uh, is a fundamental threat. Uh, to democracy and to media in a, in a country like Pakistan in particular. I mean, that's where I know more examples of. Um, so big business houses uh, control uh, the majority of media in Pakistan, all media in Pakistan, that, that dominates all the space, dominates all the narrative. And they don't hesitate to print fictional news, uh, to run fictional news on their electronic uh, media. And the quality of journalism in Pakistan, and let me tell you, we have some of the best journalists in Pakistan. Mm. We've managed to stave off three military dictatorships with the help of some of the most bravest journalists, and they're, they're in my country. But with this commercialization, with this, uh, with, less with the ads, but just sort of the big industries in Pakistan who have the money and the government doling out cash, um, what's produced in, on, on television is more acting and spin and propaganda. So you think that there's more sensationalism Absolutely. in the Absolutely. And the poor, credible journalists who for all their lives do this can barely make ends meet, aren't getting the same packages at these done-up actors who read off the mm. teleprompter. I mean, I uh, look forward to seeing how uh, this goes forward, forward in a country like Germany that is so careful uh, in protecting freedom of speech and fundamental rights. And it will be an interesting place to see how this, uh, this sort of regulation goes forward. Same with France. But just with the minister from Bangladesh, my gut reaction is the fear of uh, undermining freedom of the press, especially in young democracies like ours, uh, with the tendency to authoritarianism. And why I much prefer and I'm really excited about the idea of things like uh, Wiki Tribune, because a lot of citizen journalists in Pakistan, that would, that would allow sort of credibility and authenticity and help with the training. Uh, I like also this um, Africa check and uh, it's the Ukrainian one, Stop Fake, mm -hmm. where journalists have got together. These are, this is sort of this traditional uh, politifact angle of, uh, of checking uh, fake news. Perhaps this will develop into a more community uh, uh, driven. So you want the grassroots to kind I, of I'm police more, I'm more fake news rather than, than government I, I would it. say I, I, I'm more um, comfortable with something uh, like that. you think like that's that. enough though? I mean, for example, well, you've got elections in Pakistan absolutely. this year and, you know, And I'm sure but we, we've, we've historically been uh, dealing with fake news in uh, election cycles. Bangladesh and Pakistan dealt with fake, new, uh, fake news uh, even back then. So we've, uh, we've, it is, there, there is that component, but I personally do not trust my state to be regulating really. this. But when you've got really detrimental effects and harmful consequences of fake news in your part of the world where it can result in death. No, absolutely. Don't absolutely. you need a heavier hand than so, just grassroots policing? Uh, no, absolutely grassroots policing on its own. Well, but one important component I think that we're not addressing is education. I think we need to relook how we're teaching our kids in school. I don't remember being taught about journalism in high school or anything. You'd have taken an elective at, at university. If you're taught about sourcing, if you're taught about bias, if you're taught about how to uh, research and check multiple mm -hmm. angles and see, and also taught what does fake news look like right. from from, from so i think education is a really strong component another, another uh, in, in countering yeah.